Hello all you fluff butts out there. Kit the Soul is here with yet another Grey Muzzle rant, and this one may piss off a couple people. So let's preface this video with our reliable old trigger warning, shall we? This video is intended to be subjective, since it is in fact my own personal views being expressed. I will not be naming any individuals in this video, but rather, I will be talking about myself as well as a fair number of people who have become a part of our community. If you genuinely believe that what I'm saying in this video is an attack on you personally, I would suggest you ask yourself why. Now, with that out of the way, we're going to be talking about the disturbing phenomenon that is the furry victim mentality. Now, first things first, yes I do realize there are legitimate victims of horrible circumstances out there. There are people in our community who go through immeasurable hardships in life. I acknowledge that issue. With that said, I'm not exactly here to talk about them today. What I'm here to talk about is a social trend that has sort of taken root in a lot of people over the past five or so years, maybe a little longer. A collective belief that it is easier and therefore better to be a victim rather than stand up and face the world and its cruelty. Now, I noticed it starting to take root in the furry community, and at first I didn't pay it much mind. I overlooked the issue, and much like a disease, it spread. There are people in our community who will go so far as to lie or even harm themselves for the sake of being a victim, if even for just a little while. Why, you might ask? Well, there are a couple reasons that I've seen. The simplest of them is a desire to feel safe. After all, who wouldn't feel like they're beyond harm, with thousands of people willing to stand between them and anyone or anything who might hurt them. The problem with this way of thinking, though, is that the victim in this case becomes so dependent on others that they can't function without someone to protect them. When someone like this is forced to face the fact that the world can be cruel, it can lead to extreme anxiety, emotional distress, and even psychological breakdowns. Another reason, though, would be to use your status as a victim as a weapon against those you believe have wronged you in some way. The problem with this way of thinking, though, is fairly obvious as well. I've actually seen both of these in the furry community a lot lately, be it in the form of self-deprecating tweets or call-out posts, to people flat out asking on social media what the best way to kill themselves would be. Now, don't get me wrong. Everyone needs some form of support from time to time, be it a friend or family member, or even a professional. It's healthy to seek help when you need it, but when you're posting to Twitter weekly about suicide, it's usually a good indicator that there's more wrong than meets the eye. This, by the way, is where I have to put yet another warning, because this might get a little darker than my usual rants. You see, I've not only seen this particular mentality, but I used to live with it. There was a time when I couldn't let go of the things that I've been through in my life for one reason or another, and it led to some pretty bad situations. You see, in my life I've been the victim of abuse, both in the form of emotional manipulation and physical violence, at the hands of several different individuals who I thought cared about me. I've been the victim of gang violence due to where I grew up, I've watched people I love shot in drive-bys, and even been injured in one myself. I've been the victim of false accusations, slander, and impersonation due to an individual getting mad at me because I refused to write an inappropriate story for a minor. I've been the victim of attempted murder when I was younger because of a group of homophobic jocks in my school who decided to try and smear the queer, as they so eloquently put it. I was even the victim of rape when I was 14, at the hands of another student in my school. Someone I had, in fact, been dating for a few months prior. However, I don't consider myself a victim. Yes, these things did happen to me, and yes, they were horrible. But I don't let those moments in my life define who I am. Now. There was a time, because of the issues I mentioned, that I genuinely believed that I was nothing more than a victim. I let that mentality hold me back as well, and honestly, I wish I hadn't. I gave up two years of my life feeling like I wasn't capable of being anything more than a victim. 
just waiting to be rescued by somebody stronger, and in the end, all it got me was pain and misery. This is actually where the worst aspects of the victim mentality comes into play, and it hurts. Seeing it from the outside, having lived it once myself, I hid away from the world, finding solace from the pain in an addiction, something that made it easier to feel happy when I would have otherwise been in an emotional and often suicidal state. I lived for every new dose of poison I'd happily put into my body, desperately trying to find something that dulled the pain long enough for me to feel normal again. I got to the point where even the drugs wouldn't dull the ache, so I turned my pain outward. I obsessed and dwelled on every perceived slight, seeking revenge wherever and however I could find it. It got to the point where I didn't care who got in my way, so long as I could hurt the people who had wronged me. The problem is, most of the people I lashed out at were people who had actually never done anything wrong to me. They weren't the ones who had abused me, and certainly didn't deserve how they were treated. Without realizing it, I had fallen into seeing harm in some of the smallest inconveniences. It took the figurative crash of me hitting rock bottom to realize how far I'd actually fallen. Or more accurately, it took a crash cart. I had intentionally overdosed when I was 16, an attempt that nearly succeeded. Thankfully though, there were still people in my life who were willing to help me. The greatest problem with the victim mentality that I've seen, in our community especially, is what it does to you. It starts off slow enough that you don't notice it until it's too late. It can start off as simple as a negative thought, but it never stops with just one. And once it gets its claws into you, it digs into your psyche, grabbing hold of everything it can. It plays off of every insecurity, every fear, and every shortcoming. And like a cancer, it spreads. It consumes every waking moment, dragging you further and further into its grips until you're sure there's no escape. And then, then it gives you a way out. A way to make all the pain and all the misery and hatred go away. And just like that, a life ends in a flash, ultimately spreading the same pain and anger that led someone to this, to the people who they left behind. Now, there are reasons why I encourage those who are suffering to seek help, be it from friends, loved ones, or even professionals. There is, after all, no shame in asking for help when you truly need it, so long as you allow others to actually help you. Likewise, there are reasons why I've said time and time again to leave things like punishment to the authorities rather than a mob of enraged strangers. There are legal systems in every society in the world to deal with criminal behavior. If someone commits a crime, then they should indeed be removed from society for a time so they can get help and pay the price for what they've done. These sort of systems are put in place so those who have legitimately been wronged can fight back and help to ensure their abuser can't hurt anyone else. But when you refuse to work within the system and seek vengeance at the hands of the enraged masses, all you're really doing is creating more victims, be it through your own actions or through other people that could be hurt because you refused to try and stop the abuse. I will never let myself be a victim again. These were the words that ran through my mind when I helped put my abuser behind bars. The real one, mind you. It's a liberating feeling knowing that, for now at least, they can't hurt anyone else. There was a time that I thought vengeance would feel just as good, but honestly, I don't think I'd be able to live with myself if somebody took their own life because I decided revenge was the better option. Could you? And if your answer is yes, what does that say about you? <laughs>